Hi, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney in, uh, in at Myrick O'Connell, actually in Westboro. But this is not about my day job. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen my show, my seminars that I do, any of the, you know that Frank and Mary, their goal is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Westboro, that means right here. So they want to know the people that they should know and the programs they should know about in order to stay right here. Now, some people know me. Everybody knows Shelby Marshall, my wonderful co-host, who has been a selectman. Oh, my God. So this is not a campaign event. Um, it, it, you know, I, I believe that Shelby is running for re-election, but I don't know that. Right. But anyway, so she knows everybody and she gets these great guests and she's got another one, a great one today. Shelby, whom do we have today? Yeah. Hi, Arthur. Good morning. And good morning to Frank and Mary and friends out there. Um, so I'm really excited. Our guest today is our um, still new, I think that's a fair title, uh, Conservation Director, Jordan McCarran. Jordan, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Good to be here. Yeah, it's so, it's so um, uh, good to have you on. I've had the privilege of being in some meetings with Jordan um, where he's uh, shared his insights and um, um, I'm excited to be working with him uh, on the, the Hockamaka Pond uh, Land Reuse uh, Committee or Reuse Committee, whatever the long title is. <laughs> um, uh, it's an exciting piece of property that the town um, uh, has acquired. Um, it was, what is it called? What, what, what kind of site was it, Jordan? Help me out. So, uh, super fund. It was a super fun site, Ooh. right? Yeah, yeah, but now it's clean and we're, we got to figure out what do we do with it or portions of it are clean, obviously all that. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. That's for another show. Um, but uh, I, I thought it was important that um, Frank and Mary and friends um, had a chance to um, meet Jordan and understand what's going on with the Conservation Commission. And um, uh, so Jordan, take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for that introduction, uh, Shelby. Uh, again, Jordan, my name is Jordan McCarran. I, I live in Maynard um, and I started in uh, Westboro uh, last April, in April of 2020, uh, really uh, on April 6th, just after um, uh, everything kind of shut down and closed up. So um, it, it's been challenging, certainly to get to know the community um, and, and to get to know, uh, uh, to, to sort of um, get my face out there, let's say. Um, uh, and and part of that is because you know all of our public meetings are now virtual, and I think it uh, and so we we don't necessarily have the participation we used to. Uh, and partly uh, last spring and really in the summer when uh, uh, I ordinarily would be trying to really get out and get to know the land and maybe hosting some programs um, and trying to engage the the community and the volunteer work that's required for good stewardship, um, we just weren't doing that last summer. So I, I kind of feel that this is my first uh, year, let's say. Um, uh, so my background is eclectic, and I actually think that's a, a, a great value to this type of position. I, I do have a master's in environmental studies, but my undergraduate degree is in, in newspaper journalism from Syracuse. Um, uh, in my previous life, I, I worked uh, on organic farms. I was a park ranger on Spectacle Island out uh, 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 in the Boston Harbor. Uh, and then I sort of fell backwards into land management and stewardship. Um, I worked for a nonprofit in Weston that uh, did that type of work for the Western Conservation Commission. And that got me interested both in municipal work and and also in conservation administration and conservation management. Um, so I then worked for the town of Lexington for six years as the land manager um, before uh, getting this great opportunity um, and, and a promotion really um, into the role of conservation director in Westboro. Uh, so I just will just say a couple brief things about the conservation department just so that you know the public it understands what we do. Um, it's kind of twofold. The, the the big piece of it is is obviously the wetland permitting um, piece, which is a, a very important. Uh, there's a couple of uh, laws um, or regulations that the uh, Conservation Commission um, is is required to enforce. The big one is the Wetlands Protection Act, um, and uh, we have our own local. Uh, uh, wetlands bylaw in Westboro as well that um, has some additional uh, restrictions and considerations around uh, resource area protection and wetland protection. So that's a big piece of it. Um, 
a, a lot of folks in the community um, at Westboro is very wet. As you know, we have Cedar Swamp and a number of other wetland complexes in town. So um, a lot of people's private property and, and a lot of the commercial real estate in Westboro also is subject to these wetland laws. Um, so I think a lot of the community is probably somewhat familiar with our process, but um, the, the commission's role is really to, uh, to, to look at projects, analyze them, um, uh, make sure that they meet the performance standards that, to ensure that the resource areas are protected to the maximum extent practicable uh, and, and, and really work with applicants to, to um, get good results for their project. I will say that, that West is, Jordan, I'll say that is such a delicate balance. I know Arthur in his professional experience has been involved in a number of projects, um, you know, I would say primarily in Marlboro, but but not certainly limited to that. And, you know, I've been on a couple of conservation uh, meeting calls where, you know, there really is there's this tension um, that that exists um, that is often difficult, right? So you have a project that you're bringing forward, but yet we have these sort of natural resources, although sometimes folks may not see a wetland as a resource to them, they may see it as a hindrance, like let's just bury it and who cares? Um, but that's obviously not something that we wanna do for a variety of reasons. So, um, you know, appreciate the the good work that uh, that you guys do in, in firmly sometimes holding the line. I mean you know, holding the line to appropriate, but also working with the applicant to figure out, you know, uh, solutions that are, um, I can't say they're, uh, you know, that they could be costly, but at least they give them options. Right. Yeah. And, and I guess, so Shelby, I guess you know, as you're, you're right. I have done, been, done work on the developer side, but also worked at environmental affairs. And, and uh, as, as you know, my, my old, my cousin, Bob Durand, who had been our state senator a long time ago, had developed at that time, the Rivers Bill, which was pretty fundamental to the expansion of the, the some of the things that That's Jordan right. does, and, and it's really been fundamental. And, and I think it acknowledged the fact that you know if you don't protect that, what do you got? I mean, you've got nothing but trouble if you're not protecting all of your water resources. So it's it's I think it's you know it really and I think more people appreciate that too. Even on the developer side, more people appreciate that's that's got to be the case. You know? Well, that, Shelby, you make a great point. I think that there is an acknowledgement that um, that uh, building a project to the standards um, that are required when you're close to a wetland or a, a, a river, a stream. Um, uh, can be costly, and I and I think you know the Westboro Conservation Commission. I found to be very pragmatic. We understand that um, that it it's not without duress that people go through this process, and I think it's incumbent on on certainly on me and my department, and that, that is one of our goals is to be able to. Um, promote our work better, but but also sort of educate the community better on what are the values that we're trying to protect. Why are wetlands important? Um, it's easier to wrap your head around why are the woods out back important. They there's trails, there's wildlife that you can see. Um, there's you know uh, flowering plants and and just the whole phenology of a season that you can engage with. But wetlands are harder. Um, I think in some ways they're harder to um, connect with. Uh, but as you know, they provide a ton of important benefits, both to, uh, um, uh, for public health, but also, um, you know, for, for our environment, for our biodiversity, for flood control, for, you know, drinking water protection, groundwater protection, all these benefits that wetlands provide that if we don't protect them, um, that's a huge impact to our own, uh, you know, community, our own public health and, and safety, too. Um, so that's that's the one piece that's big, right? That requires a, a lot of our time. Uh, and the other um, is the uh, protection of our natural resources. And uh, uh, the uh, Town of Westboro's Conservation Commission um, owns roughly, let's say, 600 acres of conservation land. And of course, the Westboro Community Land Trust holds uh, uh, a lot more. Um, in fact, I just was looking at some numbers. If, if you look at the... Um, the total amount of protected land in um, uh, Westboro. Um, it's owned by the town. It's about 803 acres. There's, I think, some land thrown in there uh, that the Recreation Department owns and probably the Board of Selectmen as well. But if you look at the protected, uh, the amount of protected total land in Westboro, um, you're looking at like 28% of the, the total land um, area in Westboro. Um, and I mean, that's that's incredible. I mean, and that's a lot of land to manage and to protect. Uh, 
there's a lot of players involved. As you know, there's the Westboro Community Land Trust. There's a Sudbury Valley trustees. There's uh, several state agencies that own land. Um, one of our goals is to try and collaborate better with those other land management organizations. Um, my experience coming into Westboro was, um, you know, working with community members, working with volunteers to develop priorities and projects around uh, stewardship and land management on our town land. Stewardship, um, you know, it, that word is thrown around a lot. I, as a simple definition, it's really protecting the value of our resources for future generations. Um, and so we, we tend to focus those efforts on things like invasive plant management, um, on, uh, uh, you know, meadow and grassland management, on uh, trail management, um, uh, basically uh, just trying to protect the value of the ecology and the integrity of that land. Um, so my experience has been, you know, working with, you know, community members to, to kind of do that, to make it more of an inclusive process to really engage the community, which I think is important. So one of the things we did uh, was start this Westboro Stewardship Advisory Group. We've met once. My goal is to uh, have us convene, you know, several times a year. Uh, right now, I've got membership from the WCLT, from Sudbury Valley Trustees, um, um, uh, as well as our new Active Transportation and Safety Committee, which is a, a new committee uh, in the town of Westboro. Um, and so we'll be looking at things like, um, uh, you know, developing more volunteer uh, initiatives and programs, um, but also just promoting and publicizing um, uh, the importance of this work. And, and certainly the Westboro Community Land Trust um, it does a ton of work. I mean, they are an amazing organization. They, um, they, they, they manage the entire trail system in town. Um, uh, right now, they're looking. Uh, they're not looking at, but they're in in the process of installing a um, a fully uh, accessible trail system around Gilmore Pond. Uh, they really are the um, the go to for engaging the community um, in volunteer work around land management and stewardship. So one of my goals is not not to. Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not to encroach on their territory, but really to to just augment and amplify the work that they do uh, and, and lend my expertise where I can. Um, one thing I will mention, and this is a, a, a priority, another priority of ours, is to develop some land management plans for the properties that we manage. Uh, the way that we're going about this is first to develop a an over a sort of an overarching guidance document. Um, what we call principles and policies for managing conservation land for Westboro. And that'll have kind of the nuts and bolts um, uh, uh, of how we do everything from manage invasive plants to um, manage our, our meadows and grasslands to um, uh, uh, prioritize work. Um, and that's a huge part too, because there's never a lack of things to do. So how do you prioritize what's important? Um, uh, and then some really specific recommendations on how to manage specific invasives. Um, you know, when you're looking at meadows, uh, you know, uh, the mowing frequency and the, and the timing of the mowing is really dependent on the size of the meadow and what you're trying to manage for, what type of wildlife, um, for example. So um, it can be pretty complex. It's a lot of fun. Um, and so that that's a, a goal of ours. And then that would translate or trickle down into into plans that are appropriate for specific properties. So that's the Jordan, ultimate goal. Jordan, a couple couple quick questions. One is sure. I know you mentioned that uh, we do have um, state owned land around yes. us. I, I'm familiar when the um, uh, Rotary Club worked with the 300th and we put on a, the big 300th celebration. We worked with uh, Mast Wildlife that has an amazing building up on the hill there. I forget what technology something drive or whatever. I was amazed at, and I did, it was like in our backyard. It's within our boundaries. Um, do you see opportunities to kind of work with them? I, they seemed at the time they they opened up their doors. They provided, you know, they were teaching kids archery and doing other things. Do you see right. some opportunity there for the town? Um, I do. Yeah. I mean, I think you know. Um, Nothing about the natural environment recognizes the boundaries that we arbitrarily draw. Um, uh, so uh, I think it's a, actually it's essential, right? Um, and that's one of the goals uh, of this stewardship advisory group is to understand, for example, the Sudbury Valley trustees, they own obviously land in Westboro, mm -hmm. um, some very popular destinations for both Westboro residents and folks from outside of town. How? 
how are they uh, managing uh, uh, their invasive plants? What are their priorities? Sure. Uh, when are they? When are they? Uh, uh, you know, when are they doing this work? Um, you know, how can we collaborate? How can we share volunteers um, and not uh, compete for them? For example, yep. so uh, I think it's essential. Um, I well, and I, yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think that um, there's there's learning opportunity, there's collaboration. To your point about volunteers, I mean, I was amazed at when we were talking about publicizing that event. Just uh, Mass Wildlife's distribution, you know, their their sort of communication channels were so different than what any of us were bringing to the table, right. and and it really it it enhanced that particular event. So. Right. Um, so I love this, you know, advisory group that you've formed, and I'm sure that there are other groups that probably haven't been engaged yet. That as you learn more about the community, you know, will will be brought in. Um, it's it's true, and you know, it, it's amazing that when you really look at the the land ownership in Westboro, and you realize, well, there are quite a few other groups. I mean, uh, for example. Uh, we have a conservation area in Westboro called the Libby Weil um, uh, property. Uh, most people, I think, access it off of uh, the cul-de-sac at Carroll Drive. Um, but when you first enter in, you're actually on New England Forestry Foundation land. Uh, and, and actually, it, it's it's a beautiful parcel. It's from my experience, and I've I've run it uh, multiple times. Uh, it seems to be relatively devoid of invasive plants, at least the the kind of infestations that you see on a lot of other parcels, where you know you've got trees being pulled down by Asiatic bittersweet, um, or the understory is is is, is uh, um, you know uh, completely um, overcrowded by you know uh, you know invasive woody growth. You just don't see that there. So you know what are they doing? How, how are they managing their land? Um, that's important. I think that's good for us to know. Uh, so they would, I would want to invite them at, at the, the next time we convene this group. So you're right. It's, um, it's all about just getting to know the community. So you may be planning on touching base on this. I, I know you want to share with us the conservation website because you've yes. made some changes there. But yep. one thing I would, you know, encourage, I don't know, if I, I presume this comes under your charge is, I've never, and maybe because I've never explored it enough, found it easy to find out what all these parcels are from the disparate groups, but yet they're within, to your point, within the Westboro boundaries. So whether yep. it's Westboro Community Land Trust or this Libby yep. Wild property, I, yep. you know, I, I wouldn't know it if I ran across it, right? right? So, but how would I even find it? So I would love to see a, you know, a, you know, a centralized place that at least, sure. you know, link us to other sites where where sure. that information is available. So sure. anyway, yeah. Yeah, so that's a that's a huge piece too. Um, is just being a little bit more efficient uh, and outward facing with um, the 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 resources and the opportunities that are out there in Westboro. Uh, sure. Now, Can I ask one, just one trivia question. Yeah, right. sure. Two two trivia questions. Yeah. One is Don Burns still? Is it Don Burns? He, he yeah. Is, Don Burns. He, he indeed is um, and still very involved with both the land trust um, and with this effort to um, to to build this um, multi-mode, uh, you know, uh, rail trail in, oh, in yeah. Westboro. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it, it's just he he really inspired a lot of people in all the boroughs. I mean, he's just been the inspiration for yes. a whole bunch of stuff, right? And other, other things that involve his involvement in that Bay Circuit Trail and a bunch of stuff. It's just it's just wonderful. Which uh, leads also to the, to the other question, which is just yeah. going to be about. And it may, that may be in your presentation in, in, about the connection of your trails to the other trails and other communities. Because as you say, the, the boundaries really don't, the natural boundaries yeah. The, yeah. Really are, are different from the, what the political boundaries are. You know? Yeah, and I, I think that that's certainly um, one benefit of this townwide trail system we had called the Charm Bracelet, which is actually being rolled out and, and managed by the WCLT, not by my department. Um, so, uh, you know, as, as we... Uh, I should say, as we or if we acquire additional land that, that would have a boundary uh, with another town, we would certainly look to partner with them to make those connections. Um, um, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I think... I didn't, I didn't mean to you know, interrupt you. I know you were going to be sharing the, the site, and I know Shelby's really... Inter you, you folks are really... We want to see that. So. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, you know, I wa why don't I just do that now? I'll share our, our, our town website so folks can get uh, familiar with how to navigate it. Um, and I'll show you some uh, additions we've made and, and talk a little bit about um, information that people should expect to find, um, you know, as we kind of move forward. So I'll share my screen now. Great. 
So uh, this is our uh, uh, Conservation Commission website. Um, I encourage people to to have a look, uh, particularly if you're if you're uh, uh, have a, a permit application in front of us, or if you're planning a project and you think that um, uh, you may be within the commission's jurisdiction. Uh, what would tip you off to that is if there is uh, any wet areas uh, uh, near your property, um, a stream, uh, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> we have a, a ton of information to guide and assist um, residents and applicants through our process. But what I really wanted to, and, and what I'm excited about showing is um, we have a new tab over here. The, this, this is kind of our, our menu of options uh, called Conservation Land and Trails. And if we click on that home, that, that, uh, that first page there, um, we're going to get our COVID-19 safety um, um, recommendations. Obviously, we need, we need those front and center. But as you move down, you're going to get um, uh, links to all of our town trail maps. Um, here they are, Bowman Conservation Area, Bowman West. Oh, this is great. Headwaters, Libby Weil, and Mill Pond. Uh, and then you're going to get links to uh, all of the community land trust, the Westboro Community Land Trust parcels, including an, a... Uh, this one here will bring you to an overview of the charm bracelet trail and then the uh, properties that are uh, owned and managed by the Sudbury Valley trustees. Uh, uh, and then Shelby, to your point, I think what we could add is the state land there as well. Um, so we can build that out. Uh, a couple other interesting things we've added um, is uh, we now have an event approval form. Uh, and I'll just show this real quick. Um, if, if you know, folks are, are, are looking to host some type of event out on uh, uh, our conservation land, right now we're really only allowing events at Bowman because it's big and there's parking, et cetera. But we have a new way for people to engage with us and, and, get, and get permission uh, to do so. Um, and then the other thing that we're excited about is this new trail report form. And if you click on here, um, what you're going to get is a, um, a form where you can indicate uh, particular trail issues. If you're, out on the, um, if you're out on the land and you see a tree down here or a broken boardwalk or a tra uh, some trash, et cetera, um, you can describe the issue. And then there's a drop down over here. I don't know if you can, hopefully you can see that, um, where you can actually zoom right in. And if you're out on the land, your phone, you'll be able to do this. Um, it's location cool. enabled, so your phone will cool. will uh, know where you are. But if you're back at the, um, if you're back at your computer like I am, you can click on this star, drop a drop a pin where you are, um, and then put your information here, click submit, and then I get that, um, I get a notification, and then I can either send that over to the the Westboro Community Land Trust or dispatch volunteers on my own, depending on. Um, what the issue is and where it is. Well, so and I also see you have the ability there to upload a photo too, which is great. So this is actually yep. what I'm seeing. Um, yep. You know, so that that's that's fantastic. Yep, that's right. That's um, really good. And so, um, and so, just so the public is aware, um, you know, keep checking back because we certainly want to build out more information about invasive plants, um, particularly, and, and this is the challenge with invasive plants is that, and Shelby, to your point, there are a lot of different land management organizations in Westboro and we should be collaborating. One of the challenges is that um, uh, <clears throat> we may be doing a lot of work on, let's say, garlic mustard or Asiatic bittersweet or, or some of the uh, uh, more early detection type species on our public land, but the, these plants exist on private land as well and they spread very easily. Uh, in fact, we could do a whole show on invasive plants and I'd be happy. Well, to I was going to say, you know what, I, I would love that, you know, as, as we get into the warmer right. months here and, sure. you know, you know, you know, we're, um, people are doing outside work, maybe kind of clearing back some brush that's kind of come onto their land or whatever. I think it would be great to talk about what is it, what does it look like? How do you, how do you get rid of it safely? Um, so yeah, sure. please, please plan on that. Sure. So anyway, um, you know, educating and encouraging homeowners to kind of do their part on their own property is is going to be a huge push of our department as well. Um, so I think that that pretty much that's a good summary of what we do. It's it's part permitting, it's part natural resource management, it's a lot of community engagement, um, it's a lot of education, and uh, you know, I I guess you know. For me and for my assistant and for for our department, I you know would just like the public to to sort of know that we're available, we're very approachable, um, and we we would like to work with people, particularly around permitting. Um, give us a call and you know let's talk about your project and and let's you know we're we're very willing to help 
explain to you the the right permitting avenue or approval process for your particular project. We really want people to be successful while also protecting the resources in Westboro. Jordan, uh, one one thing that you didn't mention specifically, but it may or may not have moved um, in terms of responsibility, but I know that your predecessor, and actually I believe Sherry Wittes, your um, assistant, um, spends a lot of time um, on stormwater management of private yes. properties. Does that sort of fall under your wetlands protection it, work? It does, yeah. Thanks for mentioning that. I've, in fact, I have that in my notes right in front of me, and I just, um, uh, I'm sure my predecessor sure, he just he's, texted he's watching me and this, said, why is it he's saying, no, I'm just Shaking kidding. his fist at me. Uh, that is a, another huge component of our of our work, and we now collaborate with the DPW mostly because my predecessor, Derek Sari, has taken over as assistant DPW director, and, and it's a passion of his, and in fact, it's really important, and Westboro, like I said, is very wet. Um, flooding is a major concern. And so we have a program that's been run for a number of years now where we are inspecting and um, expecting compliance on stormwater system maintenance on a number of commercial pro properties. Uh, yeah. uh, commercial. And I, I want to speak to the, 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 um, the, the benefits, the pros of that program as a uh, business owner in town. Um, I have found it from the start of when we bought the property of like we had to put in a hold because of the impervious surface we created. So we had to put in a, a whole stormwater runoff management system. But since then, you know, the towns, you know, we get the letter from Sherry, you know, here's what you need to do. Here are the resources if it needs to be cleaned, Great. you know, extremely accessible. So um, a process that some might sort of fear, like, I don't want to get that letter. Yeah. I, I think that um, the conservation um, commission has done a fantastic job of, again, finding that balance, being a resource as opposed to, you know, <laughs> the group you don't want to see coming uh, right. or the mail you don't want to see coming. So kudos right. to you guys. Great. That's good to hear. So, so Jordan, my, my, you know, my job, as I often tell, tell guests, is, is to be, provide comic relief, but also I watch the clock. So I'm looking and, and I realize that we're getting close. This has really been fascinating. Um, and and, and it, it's wonderful. It's just wonderful. And once again, an issue that I think both Shelby and I, it, I think, are, are really. But I think you should be. We should be inviting them back. Yeah. Talking about the invasive. That's a great idea about really coordinating public and private regarding the invasive stuff. Right. So, so it. So Shel Shelby, once again, traditionally at the end of the show, yep. you know, I give you some time to be talking about Westboro because this is one of the purposes of the show is that Frank and Mary are at home, especially now they're kind of stuck at home and they want to know what's going on. So what's going on in Westboro? Yeah, so really I'll make this brief. Um, I would encourage folks to make sure that you're signed up for Code Red. Um, uh, contact the fire department, contact the senior center if you're not sure how to do that because any updates that change with respect to vaccines that are local here um, will come through that system and that's the best way to find out about it. Um, at our most recent um, Board of Selectmen meeting last night, our fire chief and board of health director gave an update and town manager on the vaccine situation, which here specifically candidly for Westboro is pretty grim given the changes that have been made at the state level and moved to regionalization, but I won't rant here. Um, uh, I, the message I do wanna make sure that folks understand is that if you have a chance to get a vaccine anywhere, jump on it and do it. Please do not wait for Westboro uh, um, town government, if you will, to provide that. It's not to say that they've stopped trying. They act absolutely are continuing to try to secure vaccines, um, but the state's process has uh, skirted that issue. Um, the other thing I wanna remind folks, um, and this is absolutely self-serving, is that the town elections are next Tuesday, March 2nd. Um, I'm very excited that we have a number of competitive races, selectmen, planning board, library trustees. So it's awesome to see um, people interested in serving and giving of their time. Um, I do hope that I've earned your vote, certainly. But even if I haven't, I, I hope Arthur will keep me on as a co-host because well, I love that, this. That, but that's why we're having the, the, the subliminal, the Shelby Marshall is flashing right now behind like <laughs> Frank and Mary. It's like this incredible thing. So yeah, that, I, hope that, not. I hope not. It'll bring down ratings. Thank, <laughs> thank, thank you for that summary, Shelby. Jordan, thanks a million. It sounds like you're having a, just a good time. You know, it's just <laughs> it's great to find the job where you're like, I can't believe they pay me for this. And it sounds like you've got that job right now, which is just terrific. Not that you can't ask Shelby for more money because you're doing a great job. So <laughs> thank you very much, Shelby. Always a pleasure. Folks, I hope you enjoyed the show. Check out the trail system. It's just fabulous, right? 
don't be afraid to talk to this guy. He's very friendly. He doesn't look like a real kind of a nut or anything, you know. <laughs> uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much. Thanks, Arthur. Thanks, Shelby. Bye. Bye.